Hello, everyone, and welcome to this one-on-one -on -one conversation with candidate Mary Winstaley O'Connor, um, who, uh, who wants to return to the Board of Assessors. Um, we want to get right into the conversation. 15 minutes is going to go by fast. So, Mary, first of all, um, if I can ask you about the fact that uh, in the debate that, we, uh, that was recently held, uh, one of the points that was brought up um, and that you, um, that you dismissed pretty quickly was the idea that, there's, uh, that there may be time for, there, it may be time for a change uh, on the board um, and uh, one of the other candidates is from a different generation, let's say, than, than you and I, um, and, um, and was talking about bringing kind of new blood and a new perspective. And you were saying that doesn't, that really is not relevant uh, to the board's work. Could you elaborate on that a little bit? Certainly. The, thank you, James. The Board of Assessors is not a political board. It is a board that uh, pretty much is a policy board. And, and the candidate who was suggesting new blood was suggesting it in the nature of uh, getting on the board to essentially help young families in town. That's not what the Board of Assessors does. The Board of Assessors basically sits as a jury or a judge and looks at the assessments that the Director of Assessments for the Department of Assessing puts on property. And when people file for abatements, they look at the information that the taxpayer brings and makes an unbiased decision. So um, that's one of the reasons. And the other reason is to quote Mr. Jameson of uh, during the debate, he mentioned that I was the best assessor on the Board of Assessors. So I would suggest that I should be returned to the position based on one of my own opposition suggesting the, the good job that I've done. Okay. Um, I, I did want to just probe a little bit further. Yes, of course, you're right that it's not a political organization. It's also not a representative organization. It's not meant to represent voters or any particular constituency or demographic. However, um, would, you, would you not agree that different people at different stages of their life are bringing different um, perspectives and different sets of values and concerns to the board? And wouldn't it be a good idea to have somebody who's in the position of the folks that you are, that are often on the other side of transactions with the board, uh, somebody with relevant experience from that perspective to bring to the board? Well, I, I honestly, James, have to take issue with the fact that you're bringing a perspective for a certain age group to the board. You're not. You're applying standards and statutes and laws. And as an attorney, they need to be applied uh, blindly without regard to an age group, except if it's a senior exemption or that type of thing. So bringing a perspective is, is not relevant per se uh, to the board. You have to, you have to be in a position to understand um, the uh, Department of Revenue standards, the mass appraisal standards, and the statutory obligations. So it's not a perspective, it's understanding the law and applying okay. it accordingly. Okay. Um, and, you know, one of the things that did come up again in the debate, uh, both Mr. Toshjan and Mr. Jameson uh, cited instances of um, potential inequity, but mostly opacity and uh, kind of difficulty understanding the process when it came comes to assessments and abatements and dealing with the board in general. Um, you have been a, a member of the board for a good long time now. Um, are there improvements that can and should be made um, in order to increase uh, transparency and just make the process a little bit easier to navigate? Oh, we have on our website uh, the process, and uh, Mr. Jamison, our, uh, uh, Mr. Tashian had said that there was not a PDF of the abatement application, and I actually, after the debate, checked with the assess director of assessment, and he tells me there is a PDF form on there. So it is all explained, and the Board of Assessors office helps taxpayers um, off many times when they come to the counter and helps them with the process. So there, um, there's lots of things online that can help uh, taxpayers. And the other thing that the Board of Assessors does is that when we, refer, when we review an abatement application and if we deny it or we allow it in part, uh, we offer the taxpayer the ability to have a hearing. We're not required to do that and we bring them in and we let them present their case again and um, we tell them um, our, uh, what our position, and then we make a decision. Uh, we revisit it. So um, 
would I be correct then in, ass in, in assuming from what you're saying that you are quite comfortable with the way that the board does its business right now and that you don't think that um, either concerns or frustrations that uh, Mr. Tascha and Mr. Jameson, perhaps others would have brought up that those aren't being already kind of addressed effectively? I think that um, they are being addressed effectively. We're always open to uh, listening to taxpayers and addressing other matters, but I, I think that that was just campaign rhetoric from the two of them, to be honest with you. Okay. I, um, I mean, I, one of the, I would like to point out that we've, I've not seen either of them, and Mr. Jameson has been in town a very long time. Mr. Tastian has only lived in town since August. They never once come to one of our public hearings to express any concerns. So I think it's just political rhetoric. Yeah, we'll, we'll actually be following up on that with them in these conversations as well. Um, so another th uh, thing I was wondering about is um, in the debate, you at one point in, as part of an answer, we're talking about how much uh, work is involved um, for the assessors just in doing the, the work that you do, and that there are only four people uh, in the assessor's office to do that work. Um, is that uh, is that adequate? Um, is is the work commensurate with the number of people to do it? Is that a problem at all? I don't see it as a problem. Uh, there are fifteen thousand parcels in the town of Arlington. That includes personal property, commercial, industrial, and residential. And the director of assessments office, that four people, are ultimately responsible for the the assessments. Um, the Board of Assessors is the, uh, is the group that hears the applications for abatements and, and um, deferrals and exemptions and things. I think it's sufficient, um, frankly. I think the department is run very well um, and uh, is cost effective for the town. Do you have a, an opinion on the, um, on the adoption or not of, uh, of split rates? That is, easing, potentially easing the burden on homeowners by setting a higher rate for commercial and, and industrial property? Uh, the Board of Assessors is asked to weigh in when we go to the classification hearing in December as to the impact of a split rate, um, you know, classification. And we do a chart every year, the Director of Assessments does a chart which shows the impact that it would have on commercial indus and industrial property versus the residential taxpayer. Uh, we can go to 150% of assessment on commercial and industrial property. The uh, uh, net effect, and it's a board of a, sele uh, a select board decision. It is not the decision of the board of assessors. Uh, we do not make that type of policy, but based on the information that we have provided to the select board, it would um, ca cause a tremendous financial burden on commercial taxpayers because most leases are pass-throughs. They're what's called triple net. So the, the commercial uh, tenants pay their rent and then they pay their share of all the other expenses. By way of example, for every uh, $500,000 in uh, taxable and, and assessed value, a homeowner, residential homeowner, if there was a split rate, the way, uh, the, ta the way the property is divided up now, would save about $150, whereas the commercial taxpayer would pay an additional to uh, $2,700 on $500,000. Um, I think that, uh, that if you look around town, it's not that we have the strongest commercial tax base as it is. There are a lot of empty storefronts. I think people are concerned the way the town looks, and I think it would only work to um, further Im negatively impact the commercial tax base. That's my personal opinion. Right, you're saying that the way that this functions, it would be a disincentive, basically, to and, attract in, in terms of trying to attract more. Absolutely. Commercial. And you can see, if you look at the heights, and you'll recall, we had a, a, a national Panera Bread that ended up leaving. Um, so it's not just, it would, it would have a devastating effect, I think, on the small mom and pops in town, but it's also had an effect on other, it would also have a uh, negative effect on even the bigger uh, companies. So I'm I'm sorry. Just to clarify, are you are you saying that the uh, the move the, the fact that Panera did move some years back from the from the Heights was was connected? No, no, that? no, no. Okay. Um, it, but it was uh, uh, what I've heard. It was connected because of rising rent costs. Mm -hmm. That's what um, people from uh, Panera have told customers. You know, okay. Right? Um, with about 
four or five minutes left um, for us to chat today. I uh, was wondering about one other thing, and then I wanted to invite you to add in anything that we wouldn't have covered. Um, and that is what, is, what do you see as the role of technology in helping you do the work that you do and helping the assessors do the work uh, that needs to be done? Is, is there, uh, are there additional technical tools that could be helpful um, in doing the assessments? Sure, the mass appraisal process that's used for assessing properties um, it has uh, IT components to it because the statistical modeling and testing that's used. Um, all of the property record cards for the entire town of Arlington, you can go on the assessor's database and get your property record card. Um, as I told you, the, you can complete your abatement application in the PDF online. So there are a number of, of um, into, uh, tech, technological things that the assessor's office uses already. And in, you know, I, I guess I did have one last thing. Sure. Um, in talking about the split rate earlier, you were mentioning, and, and, and sounds compelling to me, that, um, that the discrepancy in those rates would be a problem in terms of attracting uh, new businesses to town. Um, is there a role for the assessors in attracting new business to town? That, that's not the role of the Board of Assessors. That's more Chamber of Commerce, Select Board, you know, if Arlington had a bigger uh, commercial industrial um, tax base, a, a, a split rate could be workable. But it's not Boston, it's not Somerville, it's not Waltham or Watertown. But I did want to mention, James, that uh, both of the candidates running against me had uh, talked about a residential exemption. And, you know, I wanted to uh, speak a little bit about a residential exemption. Um, and there were only, I believe, 13 communities out of 351 in the Commonwealth of Massachusetts that have residential exemptions. And the cities that have residential exemptions have a very large um, absentee landlord base in a lot of apartment buildings, so it makes sense. Arlington is not in that situation. And though a residential exemption is something that would be decided by the select board, based on the split now, it would unduly burden people uh, I would say seniors who tend to be in larger homes with a much higher tax rate. Um, the, uh, the, one of the candidates said that he wants to help the young families in town. Um, I would suggest to you that any young family that is buying in town is buying at a certain uh, price range and would expect to pay the taxes on the property. I can't imagine that any young family would expect senior seniors to subsidize the tax rate for them. Um, it also has, Lexington looked at this issue uh, in detail and decided not to go with a residential exemption. Um, you know, there, it, would, it would result in, frankly, uh, it would have some uh, pretty devastating effects. I think that a lot of people, we had a lot of two families become condominiums. I think you'd see people with two families because they would be over the break point for the residential exemption of about 830,000 converting them. Um, you're taking housing stock off the market. Apartments would likely go condo. So people that cannot afford to buy in Arlington but that can afford to rent in Arlington uh, would be disadvantaged, in my opinion. All right. Well, we have less than a minute left. I don't know if you wanted to add in anything. If not, we can, we can close the conversation here. Up to I just you. want to thank um, you very much for this opportunity, and I hope everyone stays well uh, under the circumstances and what we're all going through. Thank you so much. All right. Well, we appreciate you taking the time to talk to us today and um, best of luck to you and the other candidates on June 6th. Thank you. Um, that's, I've been talking to Mary Winstanley O'Connor, uh, the incumbent and uh, in, in the race, of course, for a return to the Board of Assessors. Um, thank you for joining us. I'm James Milan. This is ACMI. We'll see you next time.